In this lecture, we're looking at for loops. Now, basically, a for loop should be pretty much fundamental in getting into the intermediate sides of programming when it comes to using any kind of language. But for some reason, it's not as intuitive as you might think in Construct 2. So this would be the first lecture that I say it's actually easier to do a for loop in code. That being said, it's still pretty easy, but it might be really confusing if you've never made a for loop before. I'm gonna set up a for loop and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like in code so we actually have a baseline to go off of. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a global variable. Let's call this, um, what do we wanna call this? Let's just call this counter again. And let's double click, go into our system object and grab the for loop right here. And right off the bat, you see here that we have a name, a start index and an end index. Now the start and end are pretty similar. The only thing we don't have in here would be an increment. And the other thing you have to keep in mind with construct two, and this is why I think it gets really confusing is this end index won't terminate unless you tell it to. And the easiest way to tell it to terminate at that end index is to put it in something that only triggers once, for example, a start of layout or a trigger once event. And the name is really just something to give it. So basically a normal for loop name might be I, it might be X, it might be Y, it might be YY, XX, II, J. Those are general for loop names, but of course you can be really blunt about it and you can say, this is the for loop to count the counter. I don't know. You can say something along those lines too. It's really just the name that you're going to reference this for loop as. In this, I'll call this I just to make it really easy. So from one to 10, actually, let's change this from zero to nine, because again, everything starts at zero. It's zero based. So now from zero to nine, it's going to count zero as one. This will actually give us 10 of whatever we decide to do. So now technically I should do it this way where I have counter equal nine and then I replace that end index with counter. That's actually the way I would do it. Uh, that way you have more control over the end index, how many you want. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click and go system, start of layout, and we're gonna nest this in here. So this will actually stop. Otherwise it will be an infinite loop and we don't want that. I don't know why they designed it this way, but that's just how it is. So let's go to my layout one here and you can see that I have a sprite. I just grabbed the tile background image. I literally copied it and pasted it and then I overlaid the paintbrush like this. And if you do it, you kind of get a cool gradient effect sometimes and I got it this time and it looks pretty nice. So this is our sprite and all I wanna do is randomly display it 10 times within my window. That's all I wanna do. I only want 10 versions of this. Now, because Construct2 requires you to have an object uh, present in, at least in the project, I have to leave this here. I could technically put this out here, but this is going to be my bonus object. So this would technically mean that we're creating 11 objects because this is already on the stage. I can't create an object in the system without it being on the canvas here without it being on the layout somewhere. What I usually do in all of my games is I make a layout and I call it the bank layout and I just put all of the objects there that I'm going to create in the code so my margins are clear so there's nothing outside like this. I don't even think we need this right now. Um, that's what I would do to fix that but right now we're just going to have this here and then we're going to debug this so we can actually see how many objects it's creating. It should create 10. So we're going to add the action system and we're going to go create object which is right here. I'm gonna create the sprite object on layer zero because it's the only layer we have. And I'm gonna pick a random X and Y, but within our dotted lines. So I'm gonna say random, I'm gonna grab the window width. I'm gonna say random window height, just like this. Now this should create 10 on the start of our layout. And because we have this one extra, it should create 11. So I'm gonna hit debug right here. I'm gonna pop the debug out so we can see and now we can actually see that they clustered together, which is fine because it's random. I have no control over this. But you can also see right up here that this says 11 objects. And that's what we want because now we've terminated the loop. So let's hit restart and let's see. Okay, they're random again. I can't even see them anymore. Even though I told them to only stick between the height, there's no object generally like showing me all of them. 
And I could probably tweak it a little bit more so it's perfect in between our layout size right here, but this pretty much gets the point across. And let me just keep restarting, see if I can get all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to try to get all 11 objects in here. And it might not happen because it's all random. But that's the point. You have to have some kind of stopping trigger. So now that we've now that we've done it, let's actually take a look as to what it would look like in code. So a for loop would look something like this. I'd say for, and then you either would create the variable i here, and that would be your initialization. Then you might have your termination like this and actually it would be with a semicolon if, a, if we were doing Java stuff. And then you would have your increment right there. I know this probably looks extremely foreign to you if you've never done something like this before. But essentially what we're doing is we're creating this for loop and we're calling it i. And we're saying if i, and we're actually declaring it as an integer, so we're declaring it as a number, not a string. And we're saying if it's less than 10, uh, th this less than 10 right here, this is the kill switch. This is going to stop the loop from going, which is what this start of layout has done. And that's actually where we have it as our counter. In fact, we have our counter at nine. So I'll put this to nine. So now what we're doing is we're declaring and then we have the way to kill it. And now we also have the way to increment it since we want it to be at zero. So actually what you probably end up doing is setting this to zero or something like that. So now it's going to say, it's at zero, I want it to stop looping at nine, and then I want it to increment so it gets to nine. And that's how you do it. And it's a little weird, but it's actually easier to look at a for loop this way if you're coming from any language. And honestly, I think I learned it easier this way. I was, when I was first doing Construct 2 five years ago, um, or whenever they first brought in Construct 2 and for loops, I was kind of confused by it. And it shouldn't have been that confusing, but whatever the case is, I understand it now, and what you would then be looping is something like this. Loop this 10 times, and hit OK. So there we go, that's what's gonna happen. So again, we're declaring this loop as i, and then we are looping it 10 times, because now this is zero based, so it's going to count zero as one. And the only reason it's looping is because we're adding one every single time it executes. Every single time it finishes between here and here, it's going to add one and then it's going to run it again until its termination, until i is uh, greater than 10, greater than 9. So until i equals 10, that's the whole point. So I hope that makes sense. For loops can be frustrating if you don't know what you're doing, but practice with them. Try to make some cool things with them. Maybe mess around with this. Another thing you could do is you could just print this out instead. You could just literally set the text to the counter, whatever you want to do, and you'll see that it'll happen quickly. So in game, when you're actually playing the game and then you trigger a for loop, you'll see it more. You'll see it unfold more. But in this kind of example, we're just starting it and stopping it. Now, of course, you can also, like I said, you can trigger it with a trigger once, and that's how you would do it in-game. You wouldn't obviously have it on the start of layout. This is only things to control it as an example. In the middle of your game, as you're playing it, you'd probably use a trigger once to control a for loop like this. You can also stop the loop like we did before with the manual stop loop control. Hopefully that made sense to you. Thank you for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.